We have a lot to speak about today in regards to Workhorse. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the clothing line to prove that fact. And today we're speaking about everybody's favorite company, Workhorse stock. We need to talk about Dwayne Hughes, the CEO of the company, selling his shares. Brian, should we be worried? No. We need to speak about Craig Irwin of Roth Capital saying that the USPS contract could be worth eight billion dollars not the 6.3 billion we expected and how that could affect workhorse's valuation going forwards brian do you think that's a good thing yes i want to speak a little bit about when to sell workhorse stock or, or when would i potentially sell workhorse stock brian when would you sell workhorse stock literally never brian did you steal my hat no and then there's some other general updates i just want to remind you guys that workhorse is a lot more than the usps contract and so i want to speak about you know a lot of the other aspects that there is around workhorse because I know we're all getting really excited about the USPS contract, but we have to remember everything else that's absolutely amazing about this company as well. So right before we get into the video guys, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button? I mean, if you don't guys, you know Brian is going to show up in your nightmares. I mean, you don't want that. And I mean, don't let Brian's luck fool you. He can be a mean horse. If you're new around here, please guys, hit that juicy red subscribe button and join the family. It would mean an awful lot to me. And please do drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Workhorse. I mean, I think at this stage, I know what most of you think, but let me know anyway. With that being said guys, in do the video so before we even go and have a recap into the price action the very first thing i want to show you guys is this okay Dwayne Hughes, the CEO and president of the company right now. September 17th, we saw he sold at $25.78 a share. He sold 50,000 shares for nearly $1.3 million. Why is the CEO selling? I mean, that's terrible. This must mean they didn't get the USPS contract. Well, first of all, okay, if he sold because he just found out they didn't get the USPS contract, that would be incredibly illegal and Dwayne Hughes would be going to jail. So that is the first thing I want to point out, okay? The second thing, if you watch the video I uploaded, on Friday, which was the best video we ever had on this channel, by the way, so thank you all. We spoke about this, the SEC Rule 10b51. It's a regulation enacted by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, in 2000. The SEC says that this rule was enacted in order to resolve an unsettled issue over the definition of insider trading, which is prohibited by SEC. If this was insider trading, that would be illegal. So this rule allows company insiders to set up a predetermined plan to sell company stocks in accord with insider trading lines. So again, you know this if you watch Friday's video, but in case you didn't see that, it's a predetermined plan. The price, amount, and sales dates must be specified in advance and determined by formulas or metrics. So how do we know this was the kind of trade that it was? Well, I went ahead and digged through this very boring, complicated looking form, but if we just keep going down, I have it highlighted. The sales reported on this form for were affected pursuant to a rule 10b5 trading plan. It is in black and right in front of you. This was predetermined. It was pre-planned. It has nothing to do with the USPS contract. It has nothing to do with losing faith in the company. This is how executives and insiders and pretty much everybody inside of this company will get paid the majority of their money. It is that simple. Let's not forget guys, okay? In six months, this company's up over 1800%. That is a beautiful, tasty paycheck. 1.3 million dollars. You love to see it. I bet you that Dwayne is actually upset. He had to. That's the key word. He had to sell on that date. I mean, now it's above $30 a share. And the USPS contract is looming. But I'm going to keep bringing this up. Anytime you ever see insider trading, specifically insider selling happening, remind yourself of Rule 10b-5. And then check the SEC filings and check if it is a Rule 10b-5 ruling. There we go, guys. Nothing to worry about in the slightest. He made a lot of money. Happy days for him, you know what I mean? This is also what we saw happening over the 14th and the 15th of September. If you go look into all of those SEC filings, it's the exact same story. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. So now that we have that out of the way, okay, and we understand we don't need to worry about it whatsoever, a really quick look at the price action, okay? So yet again, I want to show you guys the monthly chart, and I want to show you the fact that we're up nearly 90% on the monthly chart, which is absolutely beautiful. It's disgusting. We closed above $30.60 on Friday. For the longest time, Fridays were terrible days for workers. You know, we had good Mondays, we had good Tuesdays, and we sold off on Fridays. Now we're just having good every days. There's very few sell-offs. Obviously, this is in anticipation of the USPS contract coming. You know, this is a lot of swing traders, a lot of short-term people are getting involved, which is fine. I mean, you can see our volume has been very high lately. On Friday, it was 36.5 million shares. I mean, when you can see the float is 96.82 million shares we are trading a lot of the float on a daily basis i mean consistently trading more than 33 percent of the float 
every single day. That's pretty awesome. I would also like to remind you all, the short percentage of shares outstanding is still very close to 20 plus percent. I've had people ask me, do I think this was a short squeeze, this 9% move? No, not even a little bit, guys. In my opinion, the short squeeze hasn't even began to happen. I've said it before, when the short squeeze happens, you are going to know all about it. Short squeezes aren't a joke. They're not 5 or 10% moves, not when there's 20% of short shares outstanding. It will be massive. And I mean truly massive moves. So this is the next thing I want to speak about, okay? It's Craig Irwin from Roth Capital. And he's speaking about Workhorse. And in particular, he brings up the USPS contract. Now, sadly, I cannot find a YouTube video for this. So the sound quality might not be the best. But it's only a very short clip. By the fourth calendar quarter this year, they'll be producing 100 a month. Um, and then they'll step up to 200 a month next year. So they're really at the front end of a big ramp. And then what's really exciting is I think they're highly competitive for the, uh, the post office procurement. It's 165,000 vehicle procurement going on right now. It's about an $8 billion contract. It's about an $8 billion contract. But everybody else thinks it's $6.3 billion. Why does Craig Irwin think it's $8 billion? So this all started all the way back in 2015, guys. This is when this whole contract was announced. It was a very long time ago. A lot has happened since 2015. One thing that needed to be taken into account in the first place that nobody really did was inflation, okay? That's obviously going to lead to the contract costing more. The next thing is the fact that, you know, electric vehicles have gotten better, which means they're going to be more expensive in the first place. They have the capital for this, okay? They can afford $8 billion, without a doubt. There was a lot of worries from people, okay? Saying that, you know, if it's only worth $6.3 billion, Workhorse isn't going to be able to make much money on each vehicle. Now, I have been saying for a very, very long time, I think it's worth far more than 6.3 billion. I know a man who I think a lot of us respect, myself definitely, he's one of the men I would respect his opinion the most, saying that it's going to be approximately $8 billion as opposed to the expected 6.3. I mean, that means we're going to make a whole lot of money. If the contract does end up being closer to $8 billion as opposed to the 6.3 that million that we expected, that means each vehicle is going to be worth approximately $48,500, which falls in line with pretty much exactly what we expected the cost of the vehicle to be in the first place, people. Which means more course is going to make plenty of money. They're going to have good margins. Now, you could definitely debate that the contract isn't going to be $8 billion, but I think you can very, very very much so debate and build a stronger case on saying that it's not going to be 6.3 billion. It's been a long time since it's announced. A lot of things happen in five years, people. Let's put it that way. But this should take away some of the anxiety that people have saying, you know, workers won't be able to sell the vehicles to the USPS in a profitable manner. We quite clearly will be. I mean, if I bring you guys back to the investor presentation, they say here, the average selling price for last mile delivery vehicles is $50,000. That falls pretty much in line with what we are speaking about right now if it is an $8 billion contract, which it very, very well could be. This isn't some random person saying this, guys. It is Craig Irwin. And it makes a lot of sense when you start to think about it. As well, if we look at the Q2 earnings, okay, remember, we sold two vehicles and we got $92,000. They're not gonna be selling them for the fun of it, are they? They're gonna be selling them to make money. That would average $46,000 a vehicle. It speaks for itself. The numbers make a lot of sense. Not that I'm saying Q2 was a good quarter, but I mean, when we actually look at how much each vehicle is costing, and we compare that to the USPS contract and its new expected value, Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So with that in mind, and a lot of people are still thinking the contract's worth $6.3 billion. And there's clearly a lot of people getting more and more confidence in Workhorse. And for very good reason, in my opinion. I mean, there is genuinely just so, so many catalysts for this company, even outside of the USPS contract. Production is getting ramped up absolutely insanely. I mean, there is so much more production coming just by the end of this year alone. We're expected to have over 100 vehicles being produced a month from pretty much this month. But from what I can gather from, you know, speaking to the CFO, I think that we can expect the production to really be ramped up the last two months of the year. And then going into the first quarter of next year, we could be looking at 200 plus quite easily. And then very quickly, I think we could get to a stage where we're looking at four, five, 600 plus. That's why they've entered a strategic partnership with Hitachi, you know? So we'll all remember this, it's still relatively new news, only a few weeks old, but we entered into our strategic agreements with Hitachi. I spoke about this again in detail with the CFO. The purpose of this is just to make Workhorse an efficiently run machine, an extremely efficiently run machine. That's Hitachi's job. They're going to come in, they're going to speak about things, they're going to make sure, you know, their production is efficient, they'll make sure everything is cost efficient, they'll be doing reviews, they'll be able to give loads of advice, and Hitachi is a very well respected, absolutely massive, and I mean truly massive name people. And by the way, you would not partner with Hitachi, okay? For the fun of it. You wouldn't partner with Hitachi if you expect to sell two vehicles a quarter. You would partner with Hitachi if you expect to sell hundreds and hundreds and eventually thousands and thousands on a monthly basis. That's what Hitachi do. They make 
companies efficient. And I remember when this came out, it was an underwhelming response. I mean, when was this? August 30th, 31st? Not an awful lot happened, you know? We saw some decent movement, but none compared to what we've seen lately. And then it was preceded by a big sell-off, pretty much just as big a sell-off as it was a growth period. And I remember stressing in my videos the importance of this agreement. Me and the CFO did a second interview just predominantly to speak about this agreement and get across how important it is. It's absolutely massive. And again, I can't stress the fact enough you would not enter an agreement like this for the fun of it. You would enter an agreement like this because you expect your production requirements to go up by absolutely insane margins in a short period of time nonetheless. So that's just one thing that really, in my opinion, does need to be kept in mind and I still don't think people appreciate it or understand it enough. This here is absolutely massive. And now I do think we're finally starting to get people understanding just how important Workhorse is going to be. And I think now there's a lot more people who understand that there's more to them than a USPS contract. And I also think that we're getting to prices now, where regardless of what happens with the USPS contract, a lot of the guys like me, who are getting in around the $15 marks, are going to be okay. I've said it before, I want to be a long-term investor with Workhorse, you know, it's not a swing trade to me at all. If we get the USPS contract, not a chance I'm selling a single share. It would not matter if we went all the way up to $80, 90 or $100, I would not sell a share. When do I think you should sell Workhorse? When the contract goes through? No, definitely not. Definitely not if you're a long-term investor. Is it okay to take some profits? Of course, it's your portfolio, it's your position. You can do whatever you want. But the point I'm trying to get across here, and the point I'm really trying to stress, is that there's so much more to this company than the contract. And with that being kept in mind at all times, why would we sell just because of one catalyst? I think the USPS contract's gonna do amazing things for us. Again, in my opinion, I do think we're getting it. I think we're getting 50 to 75% of the contract, at very least. And I do think that short-term, Workhorse could easily be a 50 to $70 company, very easily which still offers disgusting upside. I think long term though is where the magic's gonna happen here. I think they're gonna be an absolute market leader in last mile delivery technology. When you get a partnership with the USPS, man, that opens up so many new avenues. We know they're speaking with pretty much every single big retailer you can think of. Think of a retailer in your head right now, Workhorse is speaking with them. The CFO again confirmed that in an interview I did with him. These guys are gonna work with so many more people than just the USPS. Any big name you can think of that's in last mile delivery, I guarantee Workhorse is speaking with them and I guarantee they're gonna work with an awful lot of them. Then we have the drone technology, okay? I don't care what you say, it's incredible. They have the patents. The patents that they have pretty much ensure that in regards to last mile delivery, Workhorse will be the drone leader. There will be more drone technology, there will be more drone delivery related technology, without a doubt in my mind. But in regards to last mile delivery, being able to launch it off of a vehicle, Workhorse has it. They've already won. There's no debate in that. Just because it's not out there and being profitable yet, they've already won. It doesn't matter. Nobody else will be able to do the things that Workhorse will be able to do because of the patents and the technology that they control. They also own 10% in Lord Sound Motors, okay? And we all know what's happening with them right now. They also get royalties for each of the first 200,000 vehicles that will be sold. They're in an amazing position. And Workhorse as well, they're already in a beautiful cash position. Again, confirmed by the CFO, not only in the Q2 earnings, but the interview I did with them, we have enough to get us through next year, already. That's without any additional capital having to be raised. That's without a USPS contract or any other major contract for that matter. We are already in a beautiful cash position. If you can just make your mind look past more than two weeks, okay? if you can make your line look five years down the future, it looks a lot more exciting than the USPS contract. That's what got a lot of us involved. It's what got a lot of us interested, but there's so much more to it. So I mean, again, to really answer the question of when should you sell Workhorse, that is something that can only be answered on an individual basis. I like to genuinely think that Workhorse could be worth 10 times what they are right now. And I know that's gonna sound crazy to a lot of people, a lot of people would have said you were crazy if you said that about Tesla. I mean, if 10 years ago you said that Tesla was going to be a $38 stock, people would have said you're insane. But I mean, now it's gone up 11,400%. The same thing could have been said for a lot, and I mean, pretty much all of the biggest companies that we see today. Anybody who ever says they see a company going up over 1,000% is going to be deemed crazy. And a lot of the time, they're going to be wrong. I mean, most companies don't go up that much. It's that simple. I do think that Workhorse could be one of them. So do I have a price target? Am I going to sell at $50 or $70? No. No, not a chance. I don't have a price target, okay? I'm a long-term investor. Long-term investors don't need price targets. Look at everybody who's held Tesla for over five years. I don't think any of them are gonna give you a price target. If you're a swing trader, if you're a short-term investor, yeah, have your price targets. Decide what profit you wanna make and get out, but I can't really help you there because I genuinely wanna hold these guys 
till they're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a share. People always like to speak about, you know, the big money made in the market, but the big money in the market comes from long-term investing. It doesn't come from short-term price targets. It doesn't come from 200% gains. It, it comes from holding the right companies for a decade, more than a decade. Warren Buffett didn't make his billions because he set 200% price targets on certain companies. He's considered one of the best investors of all time because he has diamond hands. He can pick good companies, he can hold them through the rough times, he can buy more even when he's made a lot of money. That's, that's why a lot of people respect Warren Buffett. So when should you sell? Only you can decide that. When will I sell? I have absolutely no idea, but I do know for sure it won't be when the USPS contract's announced. But anyway guys, that is the juicy little update I have on Workhorse. I really just wanted to address the fact that Dwayne Hughes is selling shares because I know that people are going to panic. I hope that you all now understand there is absolutely nothing to worry about. It was predetermined, it was pre-planned, it was premeditated. And I also wanted to point out that Workhorse is going to make money off the USPS contract and they will be able to offer a very competitive price. We have the production capacity. If you try to argue that, you are extremely, extremely ignorant, my friend. In their own factory, they have the production capacity. I spoke to the CEO of Lordstown Motors, who just so happens to be the founder of Workhorse. He said they're not gonna rent out any part of the factory to anybody, but they would help Workhorse if needed. Production is not an issue. But anyway, guys, rant over. That is what I have to say about Workhorse right now. So guys, if you have watched until the end of the video, as always, you, my friend, are a true legend. I really do appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. The support on the channel in the last couple of days has been disgustingly insane. I mean, disgustingly insane. I can't really comprehend it. The support you've shown on the last Workhorse video was more than I could ever have asked for. I mean, we're on over 4,000 likes. I hope that Brian didn't show up in any of your dreams because you guys smashed the juicy like button. But make sure you do it again or else Brian will be in your nightmares. It's just a thing he likes doing. And if you're interested, please hit the first link in my description and sign up to become a patron. You will get full access to my private Discord group. We have over 250 patrons now. We have over 1,500 free members in the Discord chat. And in the Patreon group, we speak about Workhorse all day every day. I mean, I put up all the information I spoke about in this video in there beforehand. You get the news first. We speak about SPACs, we speak about every single stock you can imagine. We speak about value plays, grow plays, everything. But anyway guys, I really do appreciate you watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic rest of the weekend. I will see you for tomorrow's video. Peace.